our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for our message this morning again is our gospel lesson from John chapter 15 where we hear these words from verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I am him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. And this is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Well, dear friends in Christ, uh, one of the things uh, that Chris and I sometimes like to do before going to bed is to watch uh, a show on Netflix or um, Amazon Prime or something like that. Uh, and simply watch that uh, on our iPad in the bed and you know, fall asleep uh, while we're watching it. Uh, but when we first moved into the parsonage and we're getting ready uh, to, you know, just kind of get everything settled and everything, uh, we noticed that we were having problems watching our shows on our iPad. Now, why was that? You know, we had wireless uh, internet that the church has so graciously provided and everything. Why were we having such problems? Well, you see, we had uh, a router, and the router uh, was fine, working and everything. But we were on one side of the house, the router was on the other side of the house, and on the lower level, about as far away as possible from this side of the house as we could get. And so, we were not having the greatest of signal, and we were having problems watching our shows. Uh, this also kind of reminds me of when we were up in Wisconsin, uh, whenever my family would go to northern Wisconsin, we would always have problems with cell service. Uh, when we would drive to this cabin that we stayed at, uh, we would always, you know, my dad would be holding up his phone trying to get a cell signal, uh, and very rarely could he actually make a call for business uh, from uh, that cabin. So he would have to go drive into town, uh, where there was a, a better cell phone tower to be in range uh, to be able to make that call. Uh, well, we're certainly not talking per se about uh, you know Wi-Fi connectivity or cell phone service. Uh, the idea of being connected, the idea of being in range, is definitely uh, what we're talking about today uh, with Jesus, as He says that He is the vine and we are the branches. Jesus wants us to be connected to him. Jesus wants us to be in range of him. And Jesus wants us to abide in him. And so we're going to talk about that a little bit more today and what that means for us to abide in Jesus. Um, I guess first off, as we think about that word abide, that's not exactly a word uh, that we use very much. After all, does anybody say, okay, uh, honey, I'm going to abide in the kitchen now or I'm going downstairs to abide, or I'm going outside to abide. We don't, we don't talk like that. We say, I'm going to go into the kitchen, or I'm going to go downstairs, or I'm going to go to the gym. And then at times, maybe we'll uh, quantify it or qualify it a little by saying, I'm going to go into the kitchen, and I'm going to be there a while, uh, because I'm going to be doing the dishes. I'm going to go to the gym and work out for about an hour or so. Uh, and so this is kind of what the idea of abide uh, is going at is that we're going to be someplace and then we're going to stay there, stay put, to remain there uh, for a while. Uh, at times, uh, we might also give uh, somebody or uh, maybe even a pet a command like to a dog, stay. And you hope that the dog actually stays put. We want that dog to stay there, to remain there, to abide there, in that place. Don't go anywhere else, dog. And then the dog goes and runs away and does whatever it wants anyway. Especially if, uh, again, if we're remembering the, the article from the Herald that I mentioned a few weeks ago with the great dog problem of 1943. Dogs running loose everywhere, terrorizing victory gardens uh, and whatnot. Uh, but this whole idea of abiding uh, in Jesus and just abiding in general in our daily lives of remaining or staying put, uh, we're talking about uh, there's a little bit of action involved uh, in abiding someplace. You go to a certain place and stay there. There's location, so uh, am I going to be in the kitchen? Am I going to be in church? Am I going to be uh, out in my garden? And there's relationship involved at times. For example, I'm going to stay with uh, my family up in Wisconsin, or I'm going to uh, go and hang out with my friends for a while. All of these have to do with the idea of abiding in something or in someone. And so knowing this, understanding this idea of abide, uh, when we hear Jesus tell us to abide in him, we hear that and at times we think, yeah, you know, we're, we do a pretty good job of that. But then at other times we find ourselves feeling uh, that we fail, 
that we don't abide or remain in Jesus, that we don't stay in him uh, as we would like. Uh, and to consider this, and to illustrate this a little bit further, uh, I'd like for us to do some math. Yay, math. <laughs> Always exciting stuff. Um, so first off, consider the fact that there are 24 hours uh, in a day, right? Uh, and if you do 24 times 7, how much is that? <laughs> Not exactly easy mental math, right? It's 168 hours in a week. Uh, and let's say our church service is about an hour long, unless I get carried away in the sermon, or uh, we sing more or longer hymns, and the service is an hour and 10 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, but let's consider it's an hour. Uh, how much of that is a percentage of our week? Molly, what's, you, you said you liked math the other day when you were babysitting Sam. What's one divided by 168? You don't know that off the top of your head? That's okay. Because it's about a little over uh, a half of a percent. Um, so consider that just for a moment. You know, the hour that we spend together in church here, uh, together as the body of Christ, is about half a percent of our entire week. While the other 99.5% of the time uh, is out in the world. Now, some of you might be sitting there thinking, okay, well, what are you suggesting, Pastor? Are you suggesting that we all quit our jobs, quit school, and just come here and hang out at church for 40 hours a week? Don't do that, uh, because then I'll be out of a job soon. Um, but no, that's not what I'm, I'm talking about, because after all, uh, Gene Veith, uh, who I mentioned in the newsletter article, talks about how our vocations are our masks of God. Uh, on the surface, it looks like we're just seeing ordinary people doing ordinary stuff, but God is serving uh, each other and serving the world uh, through our different jobs and human vocations. Uh, some of you also might be thinking, yeah, you know, some weeks that might be great to just go sit over at church, to have some peace and quiet, to not uh, be distracted uh, by the kind of things that go on in the week in, week out, daily grind. But the point that I'm trying to make uh, is this, uh, everybody. Uh, we live outside of this hour together on Sunday morning, again, for 99.5% of our time. And out in this world, uh, the 99.5% of the time, uh, we live in this world that is a world of the law, uh, we face constant expectations from uh, school, from work, uh, from the government. We just had tax time after all, uh, even among family and friends. And if we don't make uh, those expectations, there's often punishment or frustration. We live in this world that is a world of sin. We talk about uh, how our consciences at times are, are burdened by the law, uh, by burdened uh, in the sense that uh, we haven't lived up to our relationship with God, we haven't lived up to our relationship of loving others uh, as ourselves. Uh, and even today, uh, in our epistle lesson from 1 John, uh, we see this as even a greater problem of sin. Uh, from 1 John 4, verses 2 and 3, uh, by this you know that the Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. There certainly are a lot of spirits out in this world uh, that are leading people away from Jesus, not confessing Jesus Christ as their Savior. And so we live in this, and we're embattled by it, and we're, it's constantly tossed at us each and every day. And of course, also, we live in a world of death. We live in a world of death where we see it in the news, we experience it in our own lives, in our family, we see it in the obituaries each and every week. This world, unfortunately, is a world of death. And then we hear Jesus say in verses 5 and 6, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. Jesus makes it abundantly clear here. Uh, if, if he doesn't abide in us and we don't abide in him, the world of sin and the world of the law and the world of death will wither us and cause us to be burned. But dear friends, we know that this day that Jesus Christ does abide in us. He does uh, stay in us and remains in us. Uh, as he's told the disciples, he also tells us today in verse 3, already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And that word first and foremost is that word that was placed upon
upon each of you in your baptism, that word that brings comfort, that actually creates and sustains faith in God, uh, that connected us to Jesus' death and his resurrection, making us his uh, wonderful, uh, redeemed children. Uh, we continue to be fed by the word as we hear and study it here at church and with other people and also uh, individually on our own. And also Jesus continues to feed us and continues to remain and abide in us as he gives us himself in the Lord's Supper this very day. A tangible and real gift that as our uh, campus pastor once said is forgiveness so real that you can taste it. Wonderful, wonderful gifts that Jesus continues to give to us to remain in us on Sunday morning and also throughout the week. Um, and that's the point, though, kind of going throughout the week, because we need times of grace with Jesus each and every day, right? We don't need grace just on Sunday morning. We don't need grace just once when we're baptized, but we need Jesus to get, continue to abide in us, and we need to continue to abide in him uh, throughout the week. Uh, because after all, a relationship with Jesus uh, is a two-way two street. He doesn't just say, if I, if I abide in anyone. No, he says, if a man uh, or if whoever abides in me, and I abide in him. It's both. We abide in Jesus, he abides uh, in us. And so the question then for us is, how are we going to abide in Jesus uh, in this coming week and in the coming months and years ahead? How are people going to recognize you and me uh, in the sense that uh, as the apostles were recognized in Acts chapter 4 uh, when the men said that they recognized that these people had been with Jesus. Well, I, to illustrate that, I want us to go back uh, to that router situation. We didn't leave the router on the basement floor on the other side of the home as far away as possible, uh, but rather we lifted it up and elevated it and got it kind of closer to the middle of the floor and moved it to the center of the house so that coverage, Wi-Fi coverage, it could be across the whole house. And now we don't have that uh, Wi-Fi connection anymore or that Wi-Fi problem connection anymore. Uh, and Jesus tells us, you know, that we're not of this world, and that we're sent into it, uh, but in order to be sent into the world, we continue to need to be close to Jesus. And so I have this uh, keychain uh, that my mom gave me, actually, I think back in, I think it was in high school, uh, but it has a verse from James chapter 4, verse 8, that says, draw near to God, and he will draw near uh, to you. And so how are we going to draw near to Jesus on a daily basis? Perhaps it's reading the portals of prayer that we provide for everybody here on a daily basis. Perhaps it's logging on to LutheranHourMinistries.org and listening to the daily devotion uh, that they have. They can email that uh, right to, uh, to your email address and you can listen to it. Uh, or perhaps it's increasing uh, your time of prayer. Uh, I was emailing with my dad the other day. The other day, and he mentioned that as a part of his routine that he added, uh, he added a time of prayer that, and specifically, there were 10 prayers uh, that our church back home in Grafton had put in the bulletin uh, 10 ways to pray for your family. And it has uh, 10 pr prayers to pray for, and has a scripture associated with each uh, for unity, for love, uh, for courage in the face of adversity, for wisdom, for obedience, for generous hearts purity of heart and mind, for chances to bless others, and for God's guidance, and for others to see God in your family. So what a, what a neat way, uh, a, a neat addition to add uh, to your prayer life. Uh, to be able, and I actually have copies of this uh, prayer guide out uh, in, the, in the narthex after the service if you would like a copy of that to add uh, to your prayer life. Uh, and so again, Jesus abides in us, he loves us, he's given us uh, all the grace that we need each and every day but we also continue to grow, and he wants us to abide in us, whether it's through reading the word, whether it's through uh, spending time with other believers, or whether it's through uh, continuing to grow in our prayer life, as we call on his name uh, to have him answer our prayers each and every day. Uh, and speaking of prayer, let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross, and to rise from the dead, and to redeem us, and to us. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you continue to be with us, continue to abide in us, and help us to abide in you. Bless us as we grow in this faith, and help us to share with others. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now may these words, uh, may God's peace continue to be with you, and sustain you in Jesus Christ to life eternal. Amen.
Amen. How are you? Good. Come on up, Billy. Come on up, Wyatt. <coughs> Spoiled and loving it. All right. Cool. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. I have something with me, and we've used this before. I want to see if we remember what it is. Do you guys know what this is? Uh-oh. <laughs> Sam, do you know what this is? This is a pecan nut. It's a pecan nut in a shell, uh, but if we crack this open, we can have the, the pecan nut and, and enjoy it and eat it. But the, what is it? a pecan nut, come here, Sam. Would a pecan nut grow on a branch that's not connected to a tree? No. No, it wouldn't. Why not? Right, it needs the resources from the tree, right? So it needs the water and it needs the nutrients and everything. Otherwise, that branch wouldn't be able to make a pecan. And so that's how it is with us as Christians, too. Jesus talks about how he is the vine and how we are the branches. And if we abide in him and he abides in us, we'll have much fruit. And so, as you think about pecan trees, and there's a lot of them down here in St. Genevieve, and as you see them more so in the fall, and as you see uh, fruit and flowers growing, think about how we continue to be connected to Jesus, who loves us, who died for us, who rose for us, so that we can have forgiveness. And by abiding in him and loving him and growing in him, uh, we get to bear much fruit too. So let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for abiding in us. Thank you that we abide in you. 